Well, good morning to each and every one of you. My name is Matt Yon. If we haven't had the opportunity to meet, I'm senior pastor here. And it's so good to be with you this morning. Um, we've got a lot of different moving parts. I know there's be some folks. Usually by the second song, everybody's kind of flowed in for the morning. Um, uh, it's always interesting watching the flow. But I'm so appreciative of you being here this morning at 9 o'clock. A couple things I want to mention to you. One, as you're walking in today, each of you received the NS Steps. It came to you this week electronically, but we also know that some people... Don't check their email, even though we have a 54% click rate, um, uh, which is a good thing. Uh, most churches are less than 10%, so we're doing great on that. Better than 50% is awesome in the, in the electronic world. But if you didn't get a copy of it or you failed to open your email, we want to make sure that you had a copy of it. Over the next couple of weeks, we're going to ask you to fill out some information related to where you want to serve in the church and also how you want to support the church financially. So I hope you'll take some time and prayerful consideration. If you didn't bring it today or take this home and read through it and say, these are the places I want to be plugged in at. And then by the second week of December, you'll be called and asked uh, when you want to plug in and what time. So it's not going to be any delay. You're not going to be avoided or missed in any way. So if you sign up to help in a certain area, uh, you will be asked to serve in that regard. Uh, the other things I want to mention to you, one, I have to do this out of obligation. I'm supposed to announce it multiple times. It's been announced electronically multiple times, but I'm doing the verbal. We have a charge conference tomorrow night at uh, 7 o'clock. We'll have church council at 6.30 just to discuss a couple things, and at 7 o'clock is charge conference. And that's our yearly meeting with the district superintendent, Dr. Anthony Hodge. A uh, normal occurrence, it happens every single year, but I'm supposed to announce it verbally, so you now heard it verbally, so I covered that, check the box. A um, couple other things, Eagle Scout ceremony, we have three Eagle Scouts that are going through, which is an awesome accomplishment. We will recognize them formally at our Scout Sunday in February, but if you want to be a part of that today, it's at 3 o'clock, I know the bulletin says it too. Sometimes we have setup time and we don't always have the start time to certain events when it's out in quote outside groups. But the ceremony is at three o'clock today for three of our Eagle Scouts in the sanctuary if you want to participate or be a part of that. So uh, three o'clock today for the Eagle Scout ceremony. Uh, both Friday and Saturday this week was Veterans Day. We had the public holiday on Friday and then the actual day is Saturday. So if you've served in the military at any time in your life, would you please stand at this moment? Are there anybody, any folks in here? All right, let's give them a, a hand for a job well done. Just want to recognize that. I know that was a very important part of my dad's life when he was living, uh, being a U.S. Navy veteran, to recognize Veterans Day. Um, so just thank you for your service, the ones of you that stood. We appreciate it. With all that said, can we bow for a moment of prayer? Let us pray. Loving and gracious God, we're truly grateful today that we come into your presence that we're able to experience you afresh and anew by your Holy Spirit. And for each and every person that you brought here, both in person and online, we give you thanks for their life. We ask you to open our minds and hearts to hear your word spoken today and allow the songs to penetrate our hearts in order that we can worship you fully today in spirit and truth. We ask all these things today in Jesus' name and all of God's people do say, Amen. Amen. Let's stand and prepare our hearts for worship. Thank you. 
to my desk with me. For the record, I changed these batteries last week. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Now you can hear me. <laughs> Woo. This morning, our epistle reading comes from 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 through 18. Hear now these words. Brothers and sisters, we do not want you to be uninformed about those who sleep in death so that you do not grieve like the rest of mankind who have no hope. For we believe that Jesus died and rose again. So we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. According to the Lord's word, we tell you that we who are still alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
There we go. Please join me in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. On the third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Um, you may know Brittany from the standpoint of, uh, I'm on now, uh, from the standpoint is she's our church chef, um, so if you come on Wednesday nights, you've experienced her food on a regular basis and special events as well. Um, Brittany's uh, coming to join us as a profession of faith, which as an adult is a pretty powerful thing to say, I want Jesus in my life, and I want him in my life fully, so I have the standard Methodist questions we're going to ask of you today, and they're pretty easy and straightforward, but I do not have them memorized, so I have the book today. <laughs> Um, I have a lot of things memorized, just not these. So the first question I have for you today, on behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sins? I do. And do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? I do. And do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior and put your whole trust in his grace and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church, which... Christ is open to people of all ages, nations, and races. I do. That's the most important question, by the way, that you just answered. And then two more related to being a United Methodist. As a member of Christ Universal Church, will you be loyal to the United Methodist Church and do all in your power to strengthen its ministries? I will. And as a member of this congregation, St. John's United Methodist Church, will you faithfully participate in the ministries of the church by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness? I I will. Now she's a United Methodist. Can we give her a hand? Hey. Hey. I'm turning it over to her. She's going to. Fantastic. Gonna, yes, I'm going to ask you to come forward during the passing of peace time to greet our newest member in Christ, okay? Friends, <laughs> Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet in his name and share his peace. The peace of the Lord be with you all. With you. Let us share signs of peace with one another, and please welcome our newest member, Chef Brittany. At this time, I'd like to invite the children to join me up front. Good morning. Happy Sunday. How are you guys? Good. It's good to see you. We are going to celebrate a yummy holiday in a few weeks. Thanksgiving. That is right. What do we do on Thanksgiving? Go to the mountains, that's fun. <laughs> Eat turkey. Go to Ohio. Oh, that'll be fun. So we, we all are going to eat, though, whether we eat here or whether we eat there or whether we're in the mountains. We're all going to eat. What will our plates look like? Turkey. turkey. A little bit of turkey? 
a lot of turkey, ham. What's your favorite Thanksgiving food? Mm. Turkey. Ooh, your grandmother's brownies. Dessert. Is, is there just one dessert at Thanksgiving? No, sometimes there's a whole table of desserts. It's the best. Pumpkin pie, some chocolate chip cookies, some chocolate pie. Yeah, there's a lot. So we, at Thanksgiving, we take the time to feast because we thank God that he has given us enough and more than enough. And we take the time to thank God for what he has given us. And we think about ways that we can give back to God. Any ideas on that? What are some ways that we could give back to God? Yeah. We can pray always. We can pray and we can thank God. What about, are there people here that we could thank? Who could we thank here? We could thank Pastor Matt, yep, for bringing a wonderful message and helping us through things. Yep. We could thank our worship team for the lovely music. We can thank our ushers and the door greeters and the people that work in the nursery and our Sunday school teachers. You can thank me, yeah. (laughs) We have lots of people here that we are so thankful for that we get to worship together. Can we pray together now for those people? Dear God, we thank you for all of our blessings. We thank you that we get to worship you in this space with all these people. We love you. Amen. All right. If you are in second grade or younger, you can head with me to Children's Church. Good morning. My name is Mackenzie Barnes, and I'm the director of youth ministries here at St. John's. If you have a youth that is in grades 6 through 12, we would love to have them join us on Sunday nights for Quest Night, which is our youth group program here. Tonight they have their friendship feast, which is really just Thanksgiving, so it's a lot of fun, and we would love to have them join us. This morning we extend our Christian love and sympathy to Paula and Daryl Damon on the passing of Daryl's uncle, Merle Sly, who passed away on November 1st. I also want to lift up to you this morning David Lyon as he heals from a surgery and Betty and Jim Ferris as they recover from an illness. A joy that I would like to lift up to you this morning is I'd love to give you an update on our total that we raised for the crop walk. We raised $1,664, which made us the number one fundraiser in all of York County. So that is just incredible, and I thank you so much for everything that you guys did for that. The winner of the fundraiser competition was the Risher Brabham Sunday School class, and they will be receiving their breakfast this morning. Will you pray with me? Creator God, who claims us as your own, we bring our full selves to worship today, our happiness and our sorrow, our singing and our crying, our strengths and our failures. We carry it all. Teach us to trust that your faithfulness endures in all the seasons and circumstances of our lives. Help us to know that all we are is bound to you And teach us to rest on your steadfast love as the source of our gratitude and joy as we, your sheep, follow you wherever you lead. We join together now in the prayer that you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now is the time in our service where we collect God's tithes and our offerings. There are a few ways in which you can give. As the plates are passed around through the QR code found in your bulletin or through a check sent to the church office. In whatever way you choose to give, 
we thank you for your generosity this morning. of which houses and which kids volunteered the food. I want to be at the one with the largest dessert table. Can I get an amen for that? I also heard this morning that we can get free breakfast if we go visit the, the Risher Brabham class. Did y'all hear that too? Um, sounds like a pretty good deal today, but we always have uh, 
great donuts and coffee uh, right as you leave today. I hope you'll take advantage of that and also the time of fellowship. This morning we're looking at a scripture that's one of my favorites. I remember as a conference youth uh, leader, uh, which was when I was a teenager, not as an adult, we actually acted out. We had these things called spontaneous melodramas where you would basically read a scripture and somebody would have to act out the various pieces and parts. So I can act this one out for you today, but I'm not going to. But anyway, I want, to, I want you to turn with me, if you're willing to, either with your electronic Bible or your paper Bible, and look at Matthew 25, 1 to 13. It's one of three stories that Jesus has tells uh, to his disciples specifically. But I want you to hear them today with fresh ears. Matthew 25, 1 to 13, it says this. At that time, the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins, or ten young women, who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish, and five were wise. The foolish ones took their lamps, but did not take any oil with them. The wise, however, took oil in jars along with their lamps. The bridegroom was a long time in coming. In essence, he was late. And they all became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight, the cry rang out, Here comes the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all the young women woke up and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish ones said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, and our, and our lamps are going out. No, they replied, they may not, there may not be enough for both of us. You instead go to those who sell oil and buy some of it for yourselves. But while they were on their way to buy the oil, the bridegroom arrived. The, the young women who were ready went in with him to the wedding banquet, and the doors were shut. Later, the others also came and said, Sir, sir, they said, open the door for us. But they replied, I tell you the truth, I don't know you. In the most important verse, therefore keep watch because you do not know the day or the hour. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. One of the opportunities that I have each and every year for almost 29 years now is to participate in confirmation. Confirmation is, in its essence, the questions that we asked of Brittany today are the same questions we ask of the confirmation students, something their parents had already confirmed for them as a, as a baby baptized in the United Methodist tradition. But one of the things that I talk about within the context of the time with confirmand students is about three aspects of grace, and they're provenient grace, justifying grace, and sanctifying grace. So I want you to say provenient grace. What's the next one? Justifying grace and sanctifying grace. Just want to make sure you're paying attention this morning. And what I want you to think about for your own life, because this is what this passage is dealing with, is where you are on the, on the paradigm. The first and foremost is provenient grace, this point on the map. It's the point in which we know that God loves us and cares about us, and God has been working in our lives whether we're aware of it or not. And it's called provenient grace because God is wooing us. Don't you like that word? That's a good 17th century word. God is wooing us into a relationship. In essence, he wants a relationship with us that's real and personal. He's pursuing us. We're not pursuing him. Does that make sense? So that's provenient grace. Most of us can remember a time when we realized in our life, in our faith journey, that we experienced God's grace for the first time and we realized that God was what? Wooing us. The next part and the middle part of the journey is justifying grace. Now justifying grace is pretty straightforward and pretty simple. Justifying grace is that point in which you say yes to Jesus Christ. It's sometime prior to Brittany coming and be a part of the membership of the church of St. John's United Methodist Church. See, she said yes to Jesus Christ and believed it. We just publicly acknowledge what she did today. But in essence, she said yes to Jesus Christ, that he died on the cross for each of our sins, and because of that, that sacrifice on the cross, his blood sacrifice, and we believe that, that we can forever have a relationship with him if we repent of our sins and say yes to him. Pretty simple, straightforward, right? Justifying is just if I had not, what? Sinned. Slate wa washed clean. Now the harder part for some of you that have been in in a relationship with Jesus Christ is this last part, sanctifying grace. It's basically the point in which you've justified, said yes to Jesus Christ, and you're stepping through to become more and more like Jesus Christ. Okay? Now, some of you, I can attest that you're a long way from being like Jesus Christ. I'm not going to ask for any elbows or any amens, but some of you have stepped away quite a bit from that moment to this moment. It's not a criticism or a critique, it's just the reality of it. Because the sanctifying grace, the grace that continues to walk through our life, we as United Methodist pastors, ask, we, we are asked, are you moving on to perfection? Basically, are we being sanctified? And the answer is, yes, with God's help. I will do what? I will so order, order my life after Christ. 
I will become more and more like Christ each and every day. In essence, I'll become a little Christ walking around. Now, I'm not going to ask you to speak to my wife today or my kids to say if I've figured that out or not. But in essence, we're supposed to become more and more like Christ each and every day. So the three aspects of grace are what? Prevenient grace, justifying grace, and what? Sanctifying grace. The goal is to be the sanctified person, right? Perfected in the love of Christ, perfected in his vision and his, in his work. Now, I want you to look at your neighbor today, and I want you to ask them a question. This is active today. So first and foremost, you need to ask your neighbor, are you ready? Now, you say, what in the world does the pastor want to know I'm ready for? Am I ready for Thanksgiving or Christmas? Absolutely. But this is a bigger question for each and every one of you today. Are you ready to have a real and personal relationship with Jesus Christ? And for some of you, if you've not made that decision, I hope today will be your day. The day that you finally say yes to Jesus Christ and all that he has in store for your life. Whether it's your first time as a young child, an adult, or even an older adult. The second part for me today is if it's been a while, maybe you're still stuck in that justifying moment. You say, God, I've got my fire insurance but you're really not moving towards being a little Christ. Maybe this is a day where you rededicate your life to Christ. And yes, we believe that in the United Methodist Church that you can rededicate your life to Christ. I hope you will take that opportunity to consider that today. Because the scripture today is more about are you ready? In essence, are you ready for an advent? Okay? Now, for us that know in a couple weeks from the liturgical calendar in the United Methodist Church, we know Advent is coming. We celebrate the Christ's birth coming in the midst of us. Basically, God pitching his tent in front of us. Basically, coming in a little bitty baby born in a manger. But if you've been a Christian long enough, you understand that Advent is more than that. It's also about the second coming of Christ. And this passage today is about that second coming. If you recall verse 13, what did I say? Basically, you need to pay attention to this verse because what does it say? It says, therefore, keep watch because you do not know the day or the hour. You do not know the day or the hour in which Christ will return. So are you ready is what the question of this passage is asking. And my wife had the audacity last night at sitting at the dinner table to ask me if I was ready for Christ's second coming. I, I thought she was really asking about today. But in essence, she asked me, am I ready? Now, you can look in Scripture for this to say, are you written in the Lamb's Book of Life? That's an old-fashioned term that some of us have, that grew up with hellfire and brimstone. My great-grandfather preached those sermons. I'm glad he did. That is not necessarily my calling. But the question I do have for you, are you ready? Is your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life? In essence, have you said yes to Jesus Christ? You can look at this in Revelation 3 and Revelation 20. You can look in both of those places about what the reference refers to in that regard. Now, I love this story from the standpoint as you have two sets of young women in the story. Did y'all catch that? You had five that were wise and five that were foolish, and I'm not going to ask which one you are today. But in essence, we know the foolish ones were the ones that what? Thought they had it all figured out. They could all do it on their own, right? In essence, they said, I've got enough lamp oil. I've got enough stuff. I can wait for the bridegroom to come. And what did the bridegroom do? Remember, he delayed. They even, if you remember in the scripture, what did they do? They fell asleep because it took so long. And in essence, they were not ready for when the bridegroom arrived. Now, in this story, it begs the question, who is the bridegroom? The bridegroom is Jesus in this story. In anticipation of what is to come, the second coming, we don't know the day or the time or the hour. And I do not want to be one of the foolish young women in the story that's asleep at the wheel when Jesus comes. Can I get an amen for that? Because in essence, God is calling each and every one of us into a real and personal relationship. And are you willing to say yes to that? Now, Romans 14, 9 to 12 is one of my favorite passages. And you've heard me refer to, I hope there's a private viewing when the judgment day comes. Can I get an amen for that? Because what Paul reminds us is this. He says, Why then do you judge your brother, or why do you look down on your brother? For we will stand before God's judgment seat. So each and every one of us here today will stand before God's judgment seat. It is written, As surely as I live, says the Lord, every knee will bow before me, and every tongue will confess to God. So then each of us will give an account of himself or herself to God. So are you ready to give that account? We must be prepared. We cannot be saved by our parents' faith or our child's faith, our uncle's faith, 
our aunt's faith, or anybody that's a significant person in our life, we have to make the ultimate decision of who Jesus Christ is for our life today and every day. And we have to say yes to him. There are days that I wake up and I say, God, guide me in the steps that I need to go. Show me where I need to say. And in essence, I say yes to you. Are there days when I want to pull the cover over my head and say, no, God? Absolutely. I have those days too. But in essence, what are you doing in your life right now to say yes to God in every way possible? Now, what's interesting, thinking about the lamps that are mentioned in the story... They were an outward sign of what was happening inwardly in the person that was in the story. The wise virgins or the wise young women in the story were what? They had their lamp ready. It was trimmed, and they also had what? They had extra oil so that they would be prepared for what is to come. So outwardly, is your life disciplined, and are you living in obedience to what Jesus Christ is calling you to in relationship right now? Are you becoming more of that sanctified person on this end of the paradigm? Are you being perfected in the love of Christ each and every day? What's so interesting when we think about that is we don't always think about the outward part because we've got it all figured out. We show up to church every week. We check the box that we showed up to church, but sometimes we forget that that's not what God's looking for. He's looking for a changed and transformed life that's being perfected in the love of Christ. Now, inwardly, having oil in our lamps... Are you spending daily time with God? This is not a guilt thing. This is just for you to inventory for yourself. Is, are you ready? Are you spending daily time with God? Not the popcorn prayers when somebody pulls out in front of you on 85, but those deeper prayers of just spending intentional time with God. Are you reading his word, and are you participating with others in accountability? There's a difference here than a Bible study. Not against Bible study, but are there people that are saying to you on a regular basis, how is it with your soul? And that you're answering them honestly when that question's asked. Now, inwardly is a harder life to live, right? Outwardly, we have it all together because we're obedient and we have a disciplined life. Now, some of us here today, and I'm not pointing any fingers because there's some days if you listen to me long enough that I could point the finger at myself. But some of us today are allowing our, our lamps to become empty, We're not prepared with the oil of our life. We're not prepared with our inward life. We're doing so little in our relationship with God that it's become white noise in our life. And today, if that's you, please, please get your relationship with Jesus Christ straight today and give some of your time in service to others if you're empty right now. Because sometimes those service to others, those times in our life when we when we pour into someone else, allows for our lamp to be filled up. Can I get an amen? And sometimes we need to fill our lives with Scripture on a regular basis. So when those troubled times come, that we can recite Scripture without opening the book, that we can do it both outwardly and inwardly. And we must prepare as if Jesus Christ is coming today. Can I get an amen for that? In essence, we look at Scripture, and there's examples all the way throughout of various times when the disciples did not get it. One of my favorite ones is Acts 1, 10, and 11. And of course, they have experienced Christ. They've experienced 40 days of the resurrected Christ in and and with them. They've had breakfast with them. They've had communion with them. They've had all these experiences of the resurrected Christ. And they stand on this hill, and and they see Jesus ascend up into heaven. It's in Acts 10, 10 and 11. I'd encourage you to read it. They see Christ ascend into heaven, and they're sitting like this. And then you'll notice in the story that in essence, the angel of God comes to him and says what? Men of Galilee, why are you still standing here? How many of us are at that point right there? Why are we still standing there when God's calling us to a greater, deeper relationship and a richness in his life called sanctifying grace? And of course, they stand there and then they go, finally, they move and they go to what we know as Pentecost and they move forward and they take the the scripture out to the ends of the earth. 3,000 come in faith to Jesus Christ in the very sermon that Peter preaches and then they move to the ends of the earth through missionary endeavors. Of course, 1 Corinthians 4, 2 to 5 Judge nothing before the appointed time. Wait till the Lord comes. He will bring to light what is hidden in the darkness and will expose the motives of men and women's heart. 
And that time, each of you will receive his praise from God. And of course, Hebrews 4, 12, and 13, one of those scripture memory verses for me. For the word of God is what? Living and acting sharper than a what? Double-edged sword. And in essence, each of these scriptures reminds us that we don't need to be the foolish young women in this story. That we're reminded that we need to be ready, prepared with our oil in our lamps and oil ready for the journey. So when the door is closed... Hopefully we're not the one knocking on the door saying, Sir, sir, we're here. Because the hardest part to read of this passage is when Jesus says this, I tell you the truth, I do not know you. Let that sit for just a minute. Jesus is not going to look at your church attendance. He's not going to look that your grandmother or your grandfather brought you to church. He's not going to look at any of that. He's going to say, do you have a relationship with me that's real and personal? So the question that I have for you today is, are you ready? Are you ready to give Jesus Christ your full life? Not part of it, but all of it. All the failings, all the disappointments, everything in between, and say, Jesus, I want you in my life. I want a real and personal relationship with you. And I confess all the sins, the big and the great ones, the ones that people know about and the ones that people don't. And I'm ready to give my life fully to you. Are you willing to make that decision for your life today? Are you willing to rededicate your life to Christ? Are you ready to say yes to him? And today, if you're ready to do that, I'm going to ask all of you to bow your heads for a moment of prayer. But if you want to pray this prayer today, you can. And if you don't, that's okay. You can listen along as I go but as a reminder that Jesus Christ is calling each of us to a personal relationship, and he wants all of our life, not parts of it. Let us pray. Loving and gracious God, I thank you for each and every person that's here today, those in the room and those that are online today. We know full well that you want a relationship with us that's real and personal. And today we realize that sometimes we're not ready, that our lamp is empty and we need some oil. And Father, we're asking for that oil to be abundant, and we're asking for a real and personal relationship with you today. And for those that are within the sound of my voice today, if you're willing to say yes to him, will you pray this prayer with me silently? Dear Jesus, I give you all of my life, every part of it. I confess that I have not loved you with my whole heart. I failed in a myriad of ways, and I confess to you all the sins, both those of omission and commission, that I've committed against you. Forgive me and let those sins be as far as the east from the west and that you remember them no more. I give my life fully to you today in every way possible. I pray this in the powerful name of your Son and our Savior, Jesus Christ, and all of God's people do say, amen.
Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul. Worship His holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul. I'll worship Your holy name. You're rich in love. And you're slow to anger Your name is great And your heart is kind For all your goodness I will keep on singing Ten thousand reasons For my heart to find Bless the Lord of my soul Worship His holy name Sing like never before Oh my soul I'll worship Your holy name And on that day when my strength is failing The end draws near and my time has come Still my soul will sing your praise unending Ten thousand years and forevermore Bless the Lord of my soul Oh my soul Worship His holy name Sing like never before, oh my soul, I'll worship your holy name, I'll worship your holy name, I'll worship your holy Oh, my soul, I'll worship your holy name. I'll worship your holy name. Lord, I'll worship your holy Beautiful people, God, if you're willing, reach out to the person to your left and right, and let's close our time in prayer. Let us pray. Loving and gracious God, we're truly grateful for all the blessings that you pour into our lives. There are 10,000 reasons we could worship you today. Help us to continue to worship you as we depart from this service. We thank you for each and every person that's here today and for their life and the life that you give, give so freely to them. Thank you for allowing us to say yes. It's in Jesus' name I do pray, and all of God's people do say amen. amen. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship His holy name, sing like never before, oh my soul, I'll worship Your holy name, I'll worship Your holy name. I worship your holy name. 